more than one way that you can do this and get the right answer, but I'm always going to go through as process elimination, is there a faster way? So notice that I want to achieve a degree of four, four X's. If I did foiling, how, what would be the largest X that I would receive after I foiled the inside? X squared times X is X to the third. So I'd have X to the third here, and then I'd take it times X squared outside. Now, if you remember how to work with exponents, that would actually equal x to the fifth power. Does my final answer x to the fifth? Can't be that. If you multiply these two, you'd end up with x to the fourth power. That could be it. <coughs> if you multiply these two, you would get x to the second, and then you'd take it times x squared, and you'd get x to the fourth. So it could be these two. So now I need to figure out which one is it. So it's B or D at this option. Okay, let's look. So I see a 3, a 15, and 18. I can divide a 3 out. I also see x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, and x squared. I can also factor out that x squared. So when I factor out a 3x squared, I'd be left with x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now I'm going to take this portion and I'm going to factor what multiplies to equal negative 6 and combines to give you negative 5. <coughs> negative 6 and positive 1. Is that an option? Option C. Okay, look at the next one, please. So we want to see, can we factor this next one? Is it possible to write this as a perfect trinomial? All right. So um, nines, are these divisible by nine? Let's just check and see really quick. Is it divisible by nine? So I'm taking 120 and dividing it by nine, and it doesn't work. So I know I can't factor that out. Let's see if I can factor out a three. So I know that nine is divisible by three, by three and 120 is. Let's try 400. 400 divided by three. Not nice. So there's nothing I can just truly uh, factor out of this. Can this be factored then like this? I know that 9, I'm just checking now. I know that 9, well, here we go. I know this doesn't work. How about that? Let's do process elimination. This says write this twice. So I'm going to write 3x minus 20. If you factored this, you'd get 9x squared. And I said factored, I meant foil. 9x squared, then you would multiply the insides and multiply the outsides to end up with negative 6dx and negative 6dx. Okay, that's good, because here's your 9x squared, and this combines to give you negative 120x. And then negative 20 times negative 20 would give you a positive 400. Is this a positive 400? Okay, cross out option A. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the next one. I'm going to do it over here so I have a little more room. 3x plus 20 and 3x plus 20. Again, I'm foiling. I get 9x squared. Good. I multiply the insides and the outsides, and I end up with combined 120x, positive 120x. Is this a positive 120x? Cross it out. Let's try the next one. Okay, foiling. I have 9x squared for the front, good. The inside is positive 60x, the outside is negative 60x. So before I go any further, what happens to positive 60x and negative 60x when you combine? They cancel, you have no number or the number zero associated with x. That's not what we have. So A, B, and C doesn't work, correct answer is D. I've been um, positively surprised how well you have picked up on earlier this year on factoring the sum and difference of cubes. So I will use the word cube root. And what that means is what number times itself three times gives you eight, two, and if I break x down, it's x, x, and x, and if I break 25 down, it's five, five, and five. With your partner, let's see in 30 seconds if you can do this. Ready, begin.
Okay, so I'm going to bring down 1, 2, and 1x, and I'll bring down the 5. I've used one of each of these. And then I'll put a plus sign in between. 2, 2 is left over. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared. 5 times 5 is 25. Remember, this back operation is always positive. And to determine the operation, the beginning operation, the second parenthesis, it's opposite of the first operation, so it's going to be negative. 2x times 5 is 10x, and that goes in this position. Okay, let's determine which one is it. 2x plus 5, I eliminate a and b. And then we have 4x squared minus 10x, option is c. Going down to the next one. 10x to the third minus 35x squared minus 20x. So I can take out a 5, and I can take out a total of 1x. Let's factor that out. 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Notice there's a 5x outside. A 5x outside is a factor. This doesn't have a 5x, neither does this one. So the option right now is C or B. I'm going to factor the inside. What multiplies, bless you, to equal negative 8 and combines to give you negative 7? It will be x minus 8 and x plus 1, but don't forget to do bottoms up. 2 underneath and 2 underneath. x minus 4, and this pushes up 2x plus 1. Okay, let's look at option C and let's look at option B. Correct answer is option C. <laughs> All right. So this is this is being a little more difficult here as we look how can we factor this. So if you have not figured out how to factor this, recognize that one thing you can do is you can foil each one of these to figure out just like we did with the first option, which one foils out to completely equal this. I want to divide right now by four. Let's take three twenty. 324 uh, and divide by 4. It equals 81. So let's take that out. So I have 4 factored out. I have m to the 4th minus 81. Okay, this m is going to split, and the 81, since it's a perfect square, goes m squared and m squared, split in half. One's going to be plus 9, one is going to be minus 9. Okay, m squared minus 9 breaks into m plus 3 and m minus 3. So let's look for an option here. I'm looking for m plus 3 and m minus 3. Now we have that here and we have that here. And we have it up here because m squared minus 9 is the same as m plus 3 and m minus 3. So, so far, this portion that I'm highlighting has been accounted for. Now I'm looking for what is equivalent to this. 4 times the quantity m squared plus 9. That's not here. That is not here. So it can't be c. 4 times the quantity m squared plus 9 is in this location. Correct answer is b as in boy. <coughs> on to the next one. Let's complete this. It's already in standard form. Let's try to do it by the grouping method. So I can factor out an m squared. And I'd be left with 3m plus 5. I copy and paste what's in parentheses in back, putting a little question mark in front. What number times 3m is equal to negative 12m? The answer is negative 4. Let's check, is negative 4 times 5 also equal to negative 20? It is. So the front part and the back part have a 3m plus 5 in common. m squared is in front of the first parentheses, and minus 4 is in front of the second parentheses. I would generally factor this out to m plus 2 and m minus 2, which is right here. It's in no other place. And here is your 3m plus 5. The factors can be written in any order. Correct answer is d as in dog. Going on to the next one. Determine whether 
the binomial x plus 4 is a factor of the polynomial. Okay, so if this is true, if this is a factor, then the solution or the x-intercept x equals negative 4 will be an x-intercept. So let's plug this in. Second plus 712. So we have x, or 5, then x raised to the third power minus 20x squared minus 5x plus 20. Let's graph it. We want to see is the factor x plus 4, which means negative 4 is a solution, a root, a 0, an x-intercept. So if I do second trace value and type in negative 4, we can see it is not. It is not a root. So x, okay here, do you see how they kind of messed this up? Do you see how this is a plus and this is a minus? Does everybody see that? Yes or no? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, I'll tell you what this. I know that x plus 4 is not a factor. It looks like um, this test generator messed up this question. Let's try the factor x minus 4. So if x minus 4 is a factor, then what is going to be the root? x equals? Four. Let's check that. Is x equals 4 a root? Which means the factor x minus 4 is a factor. So although this is true, they wrote the question down wrong. Okay. So this should have been x minus 4, if you guys want to change that. Let's go on to the next one. Factor the following. All right. So what's the highest number I can divide out of 81 and 24? I think it is I can factor out of 3. And the most x's I can take out of both quantities front and back is an x cubed. Let's look. We have 3x cubed, 3x cubed. Okay, got all that done. So 3 times 27 is 81. I need a total of 6 x's, so I need to attach 3 more x's. 3 times positive 8 is 24. I need 3 x's, which I already have when I distribute, and I need 3 y's. Can I take this any further? And I believe we can. Notice that this is 3, 3, 3, x, x, x. 2, 2, 2, and y, y, y. You should be writing this down. This is a sum. This is a sum of cubes. Bring down the 3x and the sign in between and a 2y. Remember, we have three positions in back. I've used 1, 3, 1x, 1, 2, and 1y. You have 3x or 2x's, 2, 3's left and 2x's, 2, 2's, and 2y's. 3x times 2y is 6xy. If this is positive, this is negative, and this is always a positive. What option is that? Option A. I'm going to keep going. You may go on. Better? Thanks, Joss. Okay, in the back, we are going to factor this as a difference of cubes. Okay, so I have this quantity. Three times. This quantity, this quantity three times. Minus 27 three times. So in the first parenthesis, I'll have two items. In the second parenthesis, I'll have three items. Bring down 1, 2x minus 1. This symbol will be in this place. Remember, opposite will be plus, and in back will always be plus. So well, let's look up here. Okay. So I have 2x minus 1. I have two of these left that need to go into this position, so I'm going to foil these out. 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 1. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. That's going to go in this position. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. I've used up all three terms from the front. 1, 3 will go in front. The remaining 3's will go in back. We're going to multiply these to go into the middle. 3 times 2x minus 1 gives you 6x minus 3. Okay, 
So when I combine this, I combine like terms, I have 2x minus 4. So 2x minus 4. Okay, that's option. It could be option D or C or A or B. So I'm going to cross this out because those are accounted for. I can't eliminate any answer at this point. Now I'm looking back, I can see only one square. So I have a 4x squared. Good. So 4x squared and 4x squared. I know that with some indifference of cubes, you can no longer factor what you have inside the second or the trinomial and back. So I know it can't be A and I know it can't be C. It's one of these two options. All right, so I have 4x squared. I'm going to continue to combine like terms. Negative 4x and positive 6x is a positive 2x. Positive 1 and negative 3 is negative 2. And negative 2 and a positive 9 is a positive 7. So this is the back trinomial, which is option D. Factor this expression completely. Okay, so I'm looking here and going, what can I factor out? Each one of these is divisible by 3, and I can take a minimum of 1x out of each. I'm going to come off to the side. I can take off a 3z and factor that out, and I'd be left with 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. Now, is it possible for me to factor this any further? Well, let's think about this. 3z, and let's look at my options. What multiplies to give you 36 and combines to give you a positive 6? It would be x plus 6 and x plus 6. Multiplies to give you 36, combines to give you 12. Don't forget about bottoms up. 3z, this reduces to 2 thirds, and I push up the 3. 3x plus 2 reduces to 2 thirds, push up 3, 3x plus 2. So this is my completely factored formula. Well, let's look off to the side. 3z needs to be in front, so I can cross out A and I can cross out B. And then it should be 3x plus 2 written twice, which is the same as 3x plus 2 quantity squared. 